My name is David Andre and here is how to build your own MCP server. Now, the popularity of MCPs is absolutely exploding. If you aren't building your own MCP servers, you're gonna fall behind. Now, you might be thinking, but David, what even is an MCP? Well, think of it as a more powerful version of a tool. You can give your AI agents tons of different MCPs, for example, GitHub, YouTube, Google search, stuff like that, to make them much, much more powerful. But in this video, we'll take it one step further and I'm gonna show you how you can build your own MCP servers for any use case you might possibly want, and then how to use those new MCPs inside of Cursor or Cloud Desktop. So the easiest way to do that is with DataButton. So go to databutton.com and click on Get Started. Choose one of the sign-up options, or if you've used DataButton in the past, click on Sign In. This will take you to the DataButton dashboard where you can see all of your apps, but we're gonna start from scratch, so let's click on New App. And the first step is to describe our app. What do we wanna build? What should it do? How should it look like? So for this video, I prepared something that all of us could use, a YouTube video MCP. So make an app that let me search YouTube videos with specific keywords, for example, Vibecoin tutorial. After you clearly describe what you want to build, click on Continue. And here, on the next step, we can specify the requirements aka what you have so far. So maybe you already have a quote, maybe you already have a user story, maybe you have some spec, right? This is a good step to add it. But if you haven't built anything yet, feel free to skip this step. All right, stage three is inspiration. So here we can provide images of how we want our app to look like. So for this specific build idea, I think a good inspiration is Mr. Beast's view stats tool. So I'm gonna screenshot this middle part right here. And then in data button, we need to upload this file Boom, drag, as simple as that. Click continue and integrations. So here we can choose actually what integrations our app needs. Or if you aren't sure, you can just leave it up to data button to choose the best tech stack for you. So let's click on continue. And just like that, data button will begin creating our app. Now to help you understand what data button actually does, let me make it super clear. It helps you build the full app, right? So the front end and the back end, as well as authentication, payments, anything else your app might need. But it also helps you convert it into an MCP server. So once you have your app with data button, you can easily turn it and deploy it as an MCP. So you don't have to host it locally on your computer. It can run anywhere. Any AI agent that supports MCPs like Cursor or Cloud Desktop, you can use whatever you've built with data button. And honestly, you can build pretty much anything and turn that into a fully hosted MCP server. And I'm going to show you how to do just that in this video. So pay attention. All right, so let's go back to data button. And as you can see, it already started to work. It named our app Vibe Find, interesting name, and it created seven steps. So it broke down into seven steps. And on the right, we can see the data button agent. Now, the great thing about data button is that it encourages you to work with you, aka human in the loop, right? So we have these seven steps. And let's say I don't like something, I can tell it, okay, what about adding an extra step or why did you choose the step three? And it will explain it. Since this is pretty solid outline, we can just click on start task and get it to start building right away. Now, while this is building, let me show you some of the most impressive MCPs people have made, such as this Blender MCP. Let me just show you the demo because this is truly mind blowing. Okay, so this is in Claude, by the way, and it's creating stuff inside of Blender. In plain English, it's creating a professional looking 3D scene. I mean, this would have taken me days to make. I know like the slightest thing about Blender. I've used it like maybe five years ago, but man, this, if you are a beginner at 3D assets, creating this with just plain English, wow. This is the power of MCP servers. All right, so let's see what data button has been cooking. So as you can see, it began working right here. I'll help you implement the landing page for Vibe Find. Looking at the current code, we have a dark theme continued, okay? So it wrote some code, it did some changes and it fought for a moment. So as you can see, you can click on that and you can see the reasoning. Now, while this is running, I want to say that Data Button has agreed to sponsor this video, which is amazing because I was going to make another video on MCPs anyway. So if you want to make your own MCP server, go to databutton.com and choose one of the plans they have to offer. And by the way, you can get started for free no matter which plan you choose. Now, say you're building something very complicated and you need even more support than just AI agents. Well, Data Button actually has custom packages just for that. So for this $700 package, you basically get your own assistant developer that will help you resolve any bugs that the AI cannot do. So let's say you want to build your own AI startup, but you don't quite have the technical expertise or maybe the time to do that. Well, data button is the perfect balance because you can use this tool super easily. I mean, it's literally typing in plain English. And then if you need more support, 
from professional developers, you can just upgrade to one of these packages, which by the way, are way cheaper than hiring a developer. Trust me, I know that as someone who has a developer team for my own AI startup Vectal. And with this, you can get very, very far. So again, if you want to get started with building your own MCP servers, go to databutton.com and give it a shot. All right, let's see what the AI agent has been up to. So it seems like it encountered some errors, but then it read the code and it fixed them. And now the first task is complete. So let's go to the top left, click on preview. And there it is. There is our landing page. So I would say yes, mark as done. So now we can go back to our plan and we can simply get started on the second step, which is implement the YouTube API for video search. And let's click on start task. And there it goes. Data button instantly begins working on the second task. And it already knows that the first one was completed. So it has this list of things that need to be done, right? It's not trying to do everything at once. It creates a strategic plan to accomplish whatever goal you describe, which by the way, if you go into the settings right here, you can see your pitch. It's called pitch, but it's your original prompt. Data button is very customizable. Unlike other code builders or AI tools, which don't let you customize much in data button, you can customize pretty much anything. You can change the name of your app. You can change the pitch, AKA, you know, the original prompt. Then you can do a, like more thorough app description and even describe target audience and the design. So you can give it a lot of custom prompting, right? But this is just for the app you can even set up the AI agent. So here you can do custom instructions such as always go with the most simple and clean option. Do not add unnecessary features. And now this prompt will be in effect for all other future executions of the data button agent. And if you scroll down even more, you can see the agent guidelines, which again, lets you have even more control over the AI agent. Actually, it does a pretty good job defining the stuff itself, like what the key features should be, what the shapes should be, typography. But if you want to have control over any of this, say you don't like sans serif or whatever, you can simply change it and click on apply changes. All right, so the AI agent has stopped running and that's because it needs human in the loop. So let's see what it did, right? It fought for a moment and we can see the reasoning again. And then it says, I'll help you implement the YouTube API integration. Let's start by researching the YouTube data API. So it did a web search on the documentation for the YouTube data API, that way it's working with the latest up-to-date info. And then once it was satisfied with the amount of information it had, it said, based on my research, I'll now implement the YouTube data API integration. First, we need to request a YouTube API key from the user. So this is great. Data button agent knows exactly when it should involve you, the user in the loop. It knows that it doesn't have the ability to go into Google Cloud Console and request an API key. And by the way, this will be true for many years to come. AI agents will not be able to create bank accounts or, you know, get a new ID card or get a passport. Stuff like that will still be limited to humans. And this actually is a great example of that. So when the AI agent cannot do something, it simply asks you for your help and gives you step-by-step -step instructions how to do it. So let's do that now. The first step is go to the Google Cloud Console and it even gave me the link. So I'm just going to copy the link and paste it into my URL bar. Now, when you first open the Google Cloud Console, it will ask you to select the account. So just choose which Gmail you want to use. All right. So once you're in the Google Cloud Console, let's do the second step, which is creating a new project. So you can see your projects right here. I'm just going to click on new project. I'm going to name it data button. Okay, there it is. So let's click on select project. And on the top left, you should see your new project being created and selected. The next step is enabling the YouTube data API v3. So let's just copy this name and let's search it up in here. There it is, YouTube Data API v3. Let's click on that and let's click on enable. Okay, so after like 10 seconds, YouTube API is enabled. And as it says, to use this API, you might need credentials. So let's click on create credentials. And as data button says, creating an API key credential will look like a long string. So we need to get this, something that looks like this, okay? Simple enough. So which API are you using? Yes, we want this one. What data will you be accessing? We just want public data. Next. And there it is. There we have our API key. Now, just like with any other API key, do not share them publicly. I'm going to delete mine before uploading this video. Treat them as passwords. So let's click on copy and let's go to back to data button and let's paste it into this dedicated text field, not the main text field, this one. Paste it in here and click on send. This will securely store the API key in the data button environment. That way it can be used in the future. Okay. And in the Google Cloud Console, we can just click on done and that's it. It was pretty simple. You can easily do this if you've never used Google Cloud Console before. I know it might seem intimidating for the first time, but really you can just ask data button questions. If you get stuck at any point, just ask it. Like this AI agent is really powerful and it can help you get unstuck from basically any situation. Okay, so let's see what it's doing. Now let's install the Google API client library that will need to interact with the YouTube data API and then it installs the package. So even if you don't know anything about Python environments or Conda or stuff like that, it doesn't matter. 
with data button, it can do those things autonomously for you. I mean, the AI agent is really powerful. Okay, so then it creates a custom API endpoint for the YouTube video, and we can actually see the API endpoint right here. So in the preview, you can see the code on the left, or you can even click on edit code and make custom changes if you want to, and if you know what you're doing. But on the left, you can see the project structure. So under APIs, this is what our backend API endpoint looks like so far. Now in here, you can actually click on preview app, and this will open a new browser tab where you can fully see the app in full screen. But in a moment, I'll show you how to properly deploy it on a custom domain. So don't worry about that. Okay, it's asking me if the second task is completed. Well, we need to test that out, right? So let's give it a test. GPT 4.5 search. Okay, so there it is. It's found videos about GPT 4.5 from Fireship, from OpenAI. Let's see if it found my video. No, it didn't find my video. So <laughs> that is minus points. But... It works. This is amazing. It works. So we can easily, definitely mark the second task as completed. Yes, mark as done. Okay, so then data button recognizes that this is a good time to actually deploy it. So it says, now let's deploy our application so that it's publicly accessible. Prompted for app deployment. Let's choose what URL your app will be deployed to. So I think Vibe Find is actually a pretty good name, to be honest. Usually I don't like AI generated names, but this one is pretty cool. And this will be the link. So let's click on deploy app. And just like that, it's starting the deployment process. So you don't have to worry about what provider to use for the front end, for the back end, for the database. Data button is a full stack solution. It can handle all of these things for you. Now, if you want to see more info about how your deployment is going, in the top right, there's this big blue button deploy. And you can actually click on that and you'll see that it's still deploying. Usually this takes like 30, 40 seconds, depending on you know, how many changes you did and how complex your app is. But once that's done, you can click on this custom URL and you should be able to see your app, which by the way, in a second, will turn that into MCP server. And actually let's test out if it has the same functionality. So let's do Bitcoin, enter. Okay, so the error occurred and I think that's because it wasn't deployed yet. So let's reload, try again. Okay, so there it is. Now I can easily search up for terms, whatever I want and it will look up the videos for that. Very, very nice. So the next step naturally is to turn this full stack application into an MCP server, which you can put into any AI agent that can work with MCPs, such as cursor or cloud desktop. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so inside of data button in the top right, you can see the big button enable MCP. Let's click on that. And as you can see, data button gives us step-by-step -step instructions how to configure our MCP server. So first it gives us an API key and then it gives us four different options, right? So Cloud Desktop, Cursor, OpenAI Agent SDK and Agno SDK. And for each of these options, the setup looks slightly different, but Data Button still tells you exactly what to do and what to copy. Now to connect our Vibe Find custom MCP into Cloud Desktop, we first need to install Cloud Desktop. So just type this into Google, click on the first link. And then you can choose whatever operating system you have. I'm on Mac OS, so I'm gonna click that. Once it finishes downloading, simply double click on the installer and drag this into your applications folder. Then open the Cloud app and log in with the same account you use as on the web version. Now, the easiest way to access this Cloud desktop config file is actually with a terminal command. So open your terminal and I'm gonna leave this command below the video so you can just easily copy paste it and simply paste in this command, boom. It should open up folder of your Cloud desktop app. So in library applications support Cloud, this folder right here. And what we're looking for is this file, Cloud underscore desktop underscore config dot JSON. So you can open this with anything such as cursor or literally any other text editor. I mean, even Notepad can do the job. It doesn't have to be an AI powered code editor, literally anything that can edit text. Just open this JSON file. And in here, we need to add this config right here. So let's copy this snippet. And I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to say, add the following MCP servers into our list. Boom. I'm going to use Sonnet Max and enter. Just Let's just use AI to do the job, right? So it adds it correctly. And let's accept that. And as you can see, what's missing is our API key. So let's switch back. Let's copy. Actually, let's first enable the MCP. And then let's copy the API key. And actually, it even gives it there. So it doesn't matter. But boom. And again, do not share these with anybody. Treat these as passwords. So now we have our data button API key. Remove all MCPs except for data button. That way it matches your guys setup because if you're doing this for the first time, you won't have that. You won't have, uh, you know, GitHub and Brave MCPs in here. 
So I just want to make sure it matches your setup. Let's save that. Make sure to save this file. And then let's restart the Cloud, Cloud Desktop app. Now, once you restart Cloud Desktop, you should see more MCPs than what you had. So obviously, because I have Brave and GitHub also enabled, I have 31 different MCP servers active. But if you only added that one, you will just have one, right? And then if you say, for example, tell me about the five of the top videos about GPT 4.5, it will want to run the search YouTube videos MCP from data button. And you can enable it either once, allow it only once, or allow it for the entire chat. So if it's a safe MCP, like this one is very safe to run, you can enable it for the entire chat. That way you save yourself some time. If it's something that you want to look at what it's doing, just click on allow once. And there it is. As you can see, the MCP is working. It gives us five videos, which currently Claude Desktop doesn't have. It, is, it doesn't have YouTube API access. We needed to set that up and we needed to give it, give it that MCP. So now you know how to build your own MCP server with Data Button. So again, thank you Data Button for sponsoring this video. The link to Data Button will be below the video, so make sure to give it a shot if you want to build your own MCP server. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I wish you a wonderful, productive week. See ya.